All right, so moving on to the second segment. I will be sharing my all-pro first-team defensive predictions for the 2022 season. On last week's episode, I did this same segment offensively where I shared the team that I believe that I put together my all-pro first-team offense. Uh, I predicted those offensive guys would be on the list when the season comes to an end. Now, I will be sharing my all-pro first-team defensive predictions for this NFL season. So, let's start with the D, on the D-line. Let's talk about what who has been the best D-lineman in the National Football League this year. The man is Quinnen Williams from the New York Jets. Fine, this man is finally coming alive, finally co- living up to the potential that he had come draft night uh, when he was the in the selected the third overall pick in the first round of the 2019 draft. Quinton Williams is a big guy. He's a massive guy. He's a strong guy. This is everything you want when you're building a D lineman from scratch. And he has been the best defensive tackle in the National Football League this year. And there's no doubt about that why he should make this list. He makes plays against the run and the pass. Currently, as a defensive tackle, he currently has 10 sacks. <coughs> and he's having a great season. One of the reasons why the New York Jets, as a young core, have stepped up defensively as one of the best defenses in the National Football League. Quinton Williams is definitely on my list as a D lineman. And then my other D lineman is Chris Jones from the Kansas City Chiefs. He has made his presence known every time he steps on a na- on the field at this season for the Kansas City Chiefs defensively. He has made it look easy out there. He's a big guy playing on the defensive line, but you can line him up as an edge rusher. You can line him up as a nose tackle. You can line him up anywhere on that defensive line, and he can make plays and make it look easy. He also currently has 10 sacks, and when he's not getting sacks, he, has, he, re- he records several pressures per game. He's getting after the quarterback. He's staying active if he's not collecting stats in the sack column chris jones definitely deserves to be on my list as well let's go to edge rushers where we have the guy i believe who went win defensive player of the year award at the season end of the day and his name is nick bosa edge rusher for the san francisco 49ers he has been every offensive lineman's worst nightmare worst matchup when you talk about how the offensive line game plan for games, I guarantee you they stay up late at night thinking about how they're going to game plan for Nick Bosa. That's how good of an edge rusher he is in the National Football League. One of the best at his p- perspective position. He leads the league right now currently in sacks with 14 and a half sacks a game. Coming off a huge monster performance against the Miami Dolphins where he recorded three sacks in that game against a very talented Miami Dolphins um, Miami offensive line. And... It's a two-man race right now. I said right now, if the season ended, I do believe he would win Defensive Player of the Year award. But as we speak, it's going to be down to a two-man race within the last five to six weeks left in the national in the regular season between himself and Michael Parsons. So to me, whoever racks up the most sacks is going to win the award, just like how it came down to last year when it was a three-man race with T.J. Watt, Miles Garrett, and Michael Parsons himself. But Nick Bosa definitely deserves to be on my list. And the other edge rusher that I just mentioned that's a two-way race to win the award is Micah Parsons. He made the best decision of his young career last year when he made this all-pro all, all, t- uh, all defensive list. As he made it as a rookie, but he made it at the linebacker position. This year, and I should say last year, he was transitioning back and forth from linebacker and being used as an edge rusher. Well, now this year, he has uh, permanently switched his position over to an edge rusher this is a great move because it's rare that you have edge rushers in a national football league that can line up and run a 4-3-40 you don't see that's a speed when you talk about skill position guys like a wide receiver or running back kick returners punt returners michael parsons has that type of speed with a 4-3 you line him up on as a, a permanent edge rusher and he has a great chance of making plays like he does on every time he steps on the field his presence alone for his strength and his speed has opened the door for the whole entire defensive line for the Dallas Cowboys to make plays. That's the reason why they lead the league in sacks. The defensive line is the best. I believe that D line is the best pass rushing and the best run stopping. Not nah, let me take that back. Not best run stopping, but best pass rushing uh, pass rushing unit in the National Football League. When you talk about Demarcus Lawrence, when you talk about rookie from Ole Miss, Sam Williams, when you talk about Dorrance Armstrong, when you talk about former Atlanta Falcon, Dante Fowler, 
all of them are having incredible seasons due to the fact of the presence that Micah Parsons brings to the table every time he steps foot on the football field. He currently has 12 sacks, and has three forced fumbles. He has that uh, fumble return touchdown that he had against the Chicago Bears, which was a great play as well. And has the most games this season with two sacks, or has the most games with two sacks this season. Doing that in six games this NFL season. Micah Parsons definitely deserves to be on this list as an edge rusher. Now let's talk about it, the linebacker position. Uh, my, I believe that Bobby Wagner does des be, deserve to be on this list at the linebacker position. Despite the fact that the reigning defending Super Bowl champions in the uh, Los Angeles Rams currently find themselves at 3-9, and nine, they do have something that a positive coming from this season, and that is the fact that Bobby Wagner has played as the best linebacker, one of the best linebackers in the National Football League this year. He has not lost a step since being cut and released by the Seattle Seahawks during last year's NFL offseason, surprisingly. Um, but it's shown that he is still that stout linebacker that he was all these years in Seattle. Still, still brings that same energy to the table on a weekly basis, even though the Los Angeles Rams are currently 3-9 and nine and have really have nothing to play for. Not even a first-round draft pick. But he currently has a total of 97 tackles with 5 sacks this season. Bobby Wagner has been balling out as much as he can to contribute to this Los Angeles Rams team. I believe he should make the list at the linebacker position. <coughs> my other linebacker, one of my other linebackers I believe that should make this list is Alex Singleton, linebacker for the Denver Broncos. In spite of the all the hype that Russell Wilson was bringing to the Broncos this season when he said, Broncos country, let's ride. Well, Broncos country has not been riding. They're just as bad as the Los Angeles Rams. And this is another bright spot that this team has looked forward to is Alex Singleton. And he has stepped up big as a leader this year for the Denver Broncos. He has stepped up big. The reasons why the Denver Broncos are pretty good defensively, I believe they do have a top 10 defense despite the fact the offense can't score to save their lives. But they did have a pretty good defense, and that is the reason Alex Singleton is one of the reasons why. He's played good all year round. He's played good against the run. He's played good in coverage this season. Currently has a total of 107 tackles. I believe he's been one of the best linebackers in the National Football League this year. I believe he deserves to make this list. <clears throat> and my final linebacker that deserves to make this list on this uh, all-pro defensive team this year is linebacker TJ Edwards from the Philadelphia Eagles. And the truth, let me tell you the truth about the Philadelphia Eagles. We all know they have a lot of talent all around the board, but they have a great linebacker in TJ Edwards. Want to know why N'Kobe Dean, standout linebacker for Georgia last year, who helped them win a national championship, helped them to become one of the most dominant defenses in college football history. One of the reasons, one of the reasons why N'Kobe Dean uh, did slip all the way to becoming a third-round pick last year, uh, uh, this year and this past spring in the NFL draft is due for medical reasons. But he should be out there starting. You talk about a speed linebacker that can contribute to the game be and be a difference maker like he was at Georgia. But you want to know the reason why he's not stepping on the field and getting reps on a weekly basis? It's because TJ Edwards is right in front of him having a Pro Bowl season this year at the linebacker position. Currently, TJ Edwards is the fourth best linebacker currently ranked on Pro Football Focus. That's how good of a year that TJ Edwards is having. TJ Edwards is one of the bright spots for the Philadelphia Eagles. When you talk, you can talk about their pass rush all you want. You can talk about their defensive line all you want. You can talk about those guys at the cornerback position, uh, and Darius Slay and James Bradbury all you want. But at the linebacker position, TJ Edwards is making a name for himself this year. He currently has 66 solo tackles and has uh, a total of 109 tackles to go with two sacks this season. I this is a this is really a sneaky sneaky selection for me to put him on the all pro defensive list. I believe he should make this list this year. Let's move on to the most uh entertaining part for me to watch defenses as at the cornerback position. <clears throat> I have Sauce Gardner as one of my corners. He has been an absolute stud as, as a corner this season as a rookie. Since week one, he has played the part. He has played. He has checked all the X's, all the O's off my checklist of what I look for in an elite cornerback as a rookie. 
I'm comparing this guy already to Darrell Revis. I won't be much longer before we, instead of Darrell, uh, instead of Revis Island, we see a Garner Island, Sauce Garner Island. That's how good Sauce Garner has been as in rookie season. I see a lot of traits. I see a lot of potential for him to be the next Darrell Revis of this generation. Now, it's hard to beat this man one-on-one, man-to-man coverage. He, yes, he's gotten beaten on routes this season. Doesn't any NFL cornerback get beat on routes eventually? But he has stepped up as one of the best cornerbacks in the National Football League this year. And he's a rookie. But when you're talking about how elite he has played as a rookie, he's played the best wide receivers that this that this league has to offer. We talk about Amari Cooper, who is one of the best route runners in the National Football League. Jamar Chase, who is a top five wide receiver in the National Football League. T. Higgins, Deontay Johnson for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Tyreek Hill. You have he's guarded Jalen Waddle successfully. Cortland Sutton, Stephon Diggs, and Gabe Davis. I will say Stephon Diggs did expose him in the first few plays of that Buffalo Bills game. But despite that, he got himself back on track and in play and stepped up to the plate in that game. He is seeing a lot of great competition as a rookie and hasn't backed down from it. And he currently has a total of 15 pass deflections with two interceptions. I think this is the guy that's going to win Defensive Rookie of the Year. Sauce Gardner should make this all-pro defensive list this year. My second corner on this list is Patrick Sertain the second. He has been the best cornerback in the National Football League this season. He uh, Just like Sauce Gardner, he's not afraid to match up against uh, the number one wide receivers and will travel with the number one wide receiver the entire game. That's what a true elite cornerback does. We are lacking that right now in the National Football League. But Patrick Sertain does not step away from any smoke, does not step away from any challenge. He is on his way to being a one of the best cornerbacks in this generation. And he doesn't have the stats this year to prove why he should be on this list. But the reason why is cornerba- as quarterbacks are respecting his game and not throwing to him that much. That's why he doesn't have an interception to show on this stat sheet. But <clears throat> he's a lockdown guy. He's one of the reasons why the Denver Broncos are one of the best defenses in the National Football League. Patrick Sertain, the second, should definitely deserve to make this list. Let's move on to the safety position where you have Minka uh, One of the safeties I have selected to make this list is Minka Fitzpatrick. I believe he is one of the best safeties in the National Football League for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Makes plays and makes it look easy at the safety position. Makes plays against the run, and he's great in pass coverage. Currently has eight pass deflections and has a total of four interceptions at the safety position, and that's tied for fourth in the league. Minka Fitzpatrick definitely deserves to make this list. And the final guy who deserves to make this list is at the safety position is Derwin James. When healthy, I do believe Derwin James is the best safety in the National Football League. When you talk about the best safeties in the league with himself, Minka Fitzpatrick and Jamal Adams. I believe that Derwin James is the best safety when healthy in the National Football League. He's backed it up this year. He's been a playmaker around the field. And the Los Angeles Chargers, unfortunately, their defense was supposed to be off the charts. Like they were supposed to have a healthy uh, Joey Bosa, a healthy Cleo Mack, a healthy JC Jackson, and a healthy Derwin James. Unfortunately, they have not been the most healthiest team out there. At times, they look like a 2.0 version of what the Baltimore Ravens did in the 2021 season. But man, Derwin James has stepped up for this Los Angeles Chargers defense and helped them stay alive in a lot of ball games this year. He's a playmaker all around the field, currently has 43 solo tackles, and, and, uh, and only has allowed 27 receptions and coverage this year for his safety. That's pretty elite <clears throat> at the safety position. But that is my that is my prediction for all the guys who should make the all pro defensive list for the 2022 season. Hopefully all 11 of these guys make the list because at at this point I can't name 11 any guy that should be replaced on this list. But that's my prediction of the uh, defensive guys that will make this list this year.